Hi there and welcome to this special video providing a little bit of insight and analysis into the April 3rd earthquake that occurred in Taiwan. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Got a little bit of time right before classes start so I thought I'd spend a little bit of time explaining what happened in Taiwan. It's an evolving and dynamic situation um, probably only 24 or so hours old at this point and so it'll be interesting to see going forward, uh, the extent of the damage and that sort of thing. So I'm just going to report what I've been able to discern so far. Some of these numbers might change as we move forward, of course, uh, at, at, as of you know the recording of this today. So the earthquake was a magnitude 7.4. It occurred at about 7.58 a.m. local time on Wednesday, April 3rd in Taiwan. Taiwan sits in the western part of the Pacific Ocean off the coast of China. So you can see here using the USGS earthquake website, um, there's the main event right there, the 7.4. And then all these other dots here are some of the aftershocks that have occurred. Recognize that uh, using the US, USGS website that we're not able to get a full picture as to the number and magnitude of all of these aftershocks. These are only the bigger ones which are detected. So because we're using the US uh, seismic network, we're only able to detect earthquakes above about a magnitude four or so. Anything smaller than that, and there's likely to be dozens if not hundreds of much smaller magnitude earthquakes, those aren't going to be picked up by the USGS seismic network. But this still shows you uh, a good picture of how many of these quakes have occurred. So let's look at this earthquake in a little bit more detail. Uh, it occurred again at about uh, 7.58 a.m. local time. And you can see the depth here, about 35 kilometers depth. So that's, uh, what, 20 to 23 or so miles depth. So not a very shallow quake, but, um, you know, not a deep quake either. Had this been a lot more shallow, it probably would have caused a lot more death and destruction. We can look at the map here and see that the epicenter, which is shown by the star here, was actually on land, which is good. Initially, there was uh, tsunami warnings that were triggered because it was a earthquake and the preliminary location was close to the coastline. And because it was of su sufficient magnitude, there was some concern that this earthquake would likely be generating a uh, tsunami. But that tsunami warning has since dropped. There was no appreciable tsunami generated by this earthquake. So that's good because earthquakes of this size, if they're under the water, can actually generate a uh, tsunami, which can be destructive. Uh, we do have reports of about nine deaths so far and hundreds of people injured. So we'll hope that that number stays low, but it's likely to creep up as more, uh, more search and ref rescue efforts go on and as more is learned and discovered. Um, we can look here at the beach ball. Some of you love looking at the beach balls as much as I do, um, but this shows us that the, this tells us that the earthquake occurred on a fault that trends or strikes from northeast to southwest. And because of the orientation of these regions here, this is a reverse fault. So this is a fault caused by rocks being compressed where one side rises up over the other side, what we call a reverse fault. So this happened along a northeast, southwest striking reverse fault, which is consistent for with the type of plate tectonic setting that exists there. You can see the two uh, it's a complicated tectonic setting. I'll get more into that here in a minute, but you can see here's one plate boundary here, another one over here, and this area in here is a little bit messy. It's not a very clean area, but we have a subduction zone here, another subduction zone here, and this area kind of caught in the middle. And again, I'll come back to the tectonic setting here in a bit and discuss why why we had this earthquake where we did. There's not a lot of reports so far. Uh, again, using the USGS site, other countries may have their own system of earthquake um, you know, data collection, but 464 people so far have felt the earthquake and also reported it to the USGS site. So this gives us a, a feel for how much shaking occurred and in, in terms of um, damage that was done. So this is a qualitative assessment of the earthquake. This is called the modified Mercalli intensity scale. If we come back here, um, let's see, where do they have that maybe? Oh yeah, here we go. So it's up to um, modified Mercalli level somewhere around an eight or a nine. If we look at these two numbers here, which is pretty substantial, uh, that suggests very strong shaking, heavy shaking. If you look at this guide down here, um, 
well, severe to violent shaking damage would be moderate to heavy in sort of that range there. So this was a very large earthquake, very serious quake uh, for this area. And it was the largest earthquake in Taiwan in the last 25 years. Uh, the Prior to that, the biggest earthquake was in 1999. It was a magnitude 7.7 .7 that killed over 2,400 people. Um, and it was the second deadliest quake in Taiwan's history. Let's look a little bit at the the plate tectonic setting. It's a complicated area and one that I was in, intrigued to learn a little bit more about. I don't, I didn't know a lot about Taiwan until I kind of dove into this a little bit this morning. Uh, but here's a sort of a block 3D diagram showing the island of Taiwan that sits off the coast of China. It largely resides on the Eurasian plate. Um, but then we have a subduction zone on its west, or excuse me, east coast over here where the, it, the Eurasian plate is subducting beneath the Philippine Sea Plate. There's a chain of volcanic islands here off the coast, the Luzon Volcanic Arc, that's related to that. The Philippine Sea Plate is moving to the west at about 80 millimeters per year. But then over here off the east coast of Taiwan, that same Philippine Sea Plate is being subducted between the Eurasian Plate. So it's kind of interesting that you really only have two dominant plates here. But in one location, one plate subducting beneath the other, and in another location, the opposite plate is subducting beneath that second plate. Uh, and this is due to the density or ages of the ocean crust here. So here, presumably, the Eurasian plate has the older, more dense ocean crust, so it slides beneath the Philippine plate, whereas over here along this part of the boundary, the older, more dense um, ocean plate is the Philippine Sea Plate and this side of the Eurasian Plate is a little bit more buoyant and so it is the non-subducting side. So this area of Taiwan here is kind of caught in this complicated juncture of these of these plates and this sort of conflicting motion. As a result of all this convergence and compression, uh, Taiwan has very high lofty mountains and so here's the island of Taiwan uh, I'm not sure what the highest peak is, but it, just scanning around some of the high peaks here, it goes up over, there's a mountain that's over 12,000 feet, uh, almost 13,000 feet. Um, not sure what that would be in meters, at least 4,000 meters. Uh, so you can see there's very high peaks here, uh, very steep topography. And in places in here, you can kind of see some of these scars up in the mountains where there's clearly been uh, rock fall, landslides with this steep topography. So undoubtedly this earthquake that occurred just within the last 24 hours or so has triggered numerous uh, rock fall and landslide events in the mountains. And unfortunately some of the mountains come right up against some of the infrastructure, some of the roadways, some of the towns, and so there's likely to be uh, some damage there due to uh, mass wasting, rockfall, and landslide events associated with the shaking from this earthquake. Um, let's go back to this here. Anything else I want to share with you here with the shake map? I think that's probably it on this section. Um, let's look now at some of the the videos. Now that we've looked at a little bit of the science here, this is uh, from CNN, and this actually shows on a dash webcam on someone's dash on their car. Um, this landslide that occurred just up ahead across the roadway. So there's the camera coming back and there's that landslide. You can see how steep the topography is, just incredibly uh, steep mountains. Here's a camera view of some of the shaking and this is one of the main buildings that actually partially collapsed. I'll show you a video of that here in a second. So that building we just saw there, you'll actually see it uh, partially collapse. It just basically kind of falls forward. It doesn't completely collapse. Um, but watch the front end of this building here. There's the earthquake happening, people running around, the shaking is going on, violent shaking, and then this building just partially collapses um, on, onto the first floor, lifting up the back end, sort of just tips over like a domino, um, which is pretty crazy. Here's some more of the landslides. That might be that same one we looked at, might be a different one. Um, but the incredibly steep topography undoubtedly has produced uh, a lot of the hazards we see here. Um, yeah, strongest quake, there's some people, there's water slush, there's some people on a bridge with some of the shaking and rocking on this bridge, water sloshing out of this hotel pool, I suppose, or 
on this roof. <laughs> There's a person writing out the earthquake in the pool. Um, yeah, and again, this happened at a, a particularly vulnerable time. You know, 8 o'clock in the morning is a time when people are on the go, getting to work, traveling, getting different places. So um, I'm, undoubtedly, you'll be able to look at a lot of these. Um, I think this is the same one. This is just some video footage of it after it occurred. But you can get on the Internet just like I did and just pull up some different videos. You'll undoubtedly see more of these moving forward. So the first floor just sort of pancaked down uh, and the building collapsed and onto that first floor there. So and this town here, Hualien, is apparently the the city that was most hard hit. And that city sits um, up the coast here. Let's see. It is right here. Yeah. So that was closest. That was the biggest urban area, I believe, that was closest to the epicenter of the earthquake. So um, let's make sure that's true. Yeah, it sits right here. And then the, the epicenter or the location was just a little bit to the south. So uh, an unfortunate event, but uh, one that I just wanted to provide a little bit of analysis and update for. Um, Undoubtedly, moving forward, we'll be able to see the full extent of the damage. The aftershocks will continue, and that will, of course, uh, make search and rescue efforts difficult because you've got buildings that have been uh, sh strongly shaken. Some of them might be near their tipping point, and so sometimes you can get these smaller aftershocks that actually cause the building to collapse or the roadway to collapse because it's been so damaged and compromised by the initial set of shaking. So just a quick little update here from uh, my perspective as a geologist. Hope that provided a little bit of insight and a little bit of help as to why we had this earthquake in Taiwan. It's in a very likely earthquake zone sitting at the junction of these tectonic plates. This is where the bulk of the Earth's um, activity occurs is along these tectonic plates. So you can also kind of go to the USGS site. You can play around with this just like I am here. You can change it to the satellite view if you want to. Um, and then you can click on each one of these earthquakes that have been detected and look at some of the information on those if you so choose. So hopefully this was helpful. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day and we'll see you soon. Take care.